to Sidi's house. But they hope Jaglovac is powerful enough that even this small number can drive out a colony of half a million termites. Here are the termites that are bothering us. Jaglavak, drive them from this house forever. Jaglavak, I give you the ochre that makes you invincible. Fight for us. The battle begins. The termite mound is well guarded, and the soldiers are up to ten times as big as the Jaglavak ants. A single snap of a termite's jaw is enough to cut the body of its tiny assailant in half. The ants attack strategically. They immobilize the termite soldiers by grabbing onto their legs and their antennae. Highly developed senses of smell and touch are essential to both sides in the battle. Once a termite soldier is overwhelmed, the ants use their sharp teeth to tear apart the joints of its thick protective shell. With the front line of termite soldiers incapacitated, the ants push forward into the tunnels in a relentless stream. Following her scent, the ants find the ultimate goal, the queen. The king termite is sending alarm signals as the ants push forward. Workers pull the queen toward an escape tunnel. She uses her immense abdominal muscles to try to push herself out of danger. The remaining termite soldiers attempt to block the other tunnels in the mound and slow down the ants. But Jaglovac's small size is in its favor and the ants continue their surge. As soon as the queen is pushed into the escape tunnel, the workers race to plug it up before the ants can get there. Queen has escaped. She is followed in her exodus by the entire colony. The Jaglovac ants take their dead prey and leave the house. The termites have fled. Everything went as planned. That's good. I'm relieved. Thank you, Jaglavak. Farewell, dear Ba. Everyone's prayers have been answered. The crops and the village are now safe.
With the threat of termites gone, the men bring straw into the village. The damaged roofs must be repaired before the harvest. The people come together to rebuild city's house and a new granary. This communal work is a gesture of honor to the ancestor spirits who will reside here and guard the grain during the dry season ahead. This year, the ears are full, and the harvest promises to be a good one. The cycle of life begins again, starting with the millet bird. According to Mofu legend, the bird now returns the seeds it received from the black ant during the dry season. The ants gather the seeds to take them back to their nest, building up their own reserves for the coming months. When the bird pecks at the stalks, the crops are ready for cultivation. The plants can grow up to 12 feet high, almost to the rooftops of the village homes. Using sickles, men and women work together to cut down the giant stalks. The work and the results are shared. Crops are distributed to the heads of families, each having their own granary. Once they're cut down, the stalks are gathered together for threshing. The seeds are removed from the stalks, and the mofu let the wind separate the chaff from the useful grain.
It's now November, and the granaries are filling up. Growing cycle is over for another year. Before we lived at the top of the mountain, close to nature. Today I feel a bit lost. It seems like a part of our tradition stayed up there. The insects all around us have the same needs as we do. They share our fields and our homes. That is why we have to help each other. But if we don't talk to the insects anymore, they will stop helping us. The unique relationship between the Mofu people and the insects is a fragile one. is now up to the next generation to carry the traditions forward. On Nova's Master of the Killer Ants website, see other bugs you can eat, match different ants to their unusual behaviors, and more. Find it on pbs.org. Order this show or any other Nova program for $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Call WGBH Boston Video at 1-800-255-9424.